us. Remember, new episodes premiere every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 p.m. on TV15 and across other social media platforms. I'm Jesenia Lassiter, wishing you a wonderful week. Stay friendly, St. Martin. Everything is okay. Hope everything is all right. I'm your host, Andrew J. Okie dokie, kids, what's happening on the lovely island of St. Martin? We begin with the government of St. Martin being ridiculous once again. <sighs> Every single time that you have some hope in the government of St. Martin, they go and give you exactly what is expected of them. Absolutely madness. Madness, madness, madness. <sighs> All right, let's start off. Nathan put up on the screen for me the letter from the um, registration, or I should say the government of St. Martin, to long-term residents. Um, and the letter reads as follows. Um, I got it here in the paper. I was so pissed off when I saw it. Basically, long-time residents are frustrated over the census office request for birth certificate. Now, they send you a letter, and I don't know if you receive mail, so maybe you should check it. And in, um, on the letter, it says, it goes as follows. <clears throat> Being registered in the basis ad basic administration or in St. Martin entails having a complete profile. This profile includes having information that derives from a birth certificate, marriage certificate, passport, and information from the living spouse, children, and parents. According to our records, your profile is incomplete. The following document is being requested from your person. A birth certificate. Please ensure that the proper legalization is on the document and that the document is not older than three years. If the document is in a foreign language, other than English or Dutch, it must be translated. There are two types of legalization, apostle and legalization by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Dutch Embassy Consulate. Please note that you have six months to present this document in order to complete your profile. Should you refrain from doing so, then you will not be able to receive any product from the department. The department would like to thank you in advance for your cooperation in assisting with the mission and vision of the development, which entails providing reliable basic administration with accurate information. Hope you have been informed sufficiently, management, civil registry, and then a stamp. Ladies and gentlemen, let me be the first one to say, tell the census office to go to hell. Go to hell and don't harass you. Do not respond. Do not send back anything. Do not do anything. When these crazy people who just recently asked you to vote. I get an upset. They just asked you to vote. And now, after, after they used you, because you got Dutch passport, they asking you for your original birth certificate. Let's say, there is a grandfather out there, an old person, a senior, that is 
88 years old. They originally come from Timbuktu. They've been here on the island for 70 years. Let's just say 70 years. Where, how will they be able right now at the age that they're at? Would they be able to get their birth certificate? And their birth certificate for what? I've been here for 70 years. If you ain't get it right for 70 years, for the time I've been here, you ain't gonna get it right now. So now you wanna fix it? And who the hell you think you is? You're going to tell hardworking taxpayers, because that's where they are, ladies and gentlemen. Dutch citizens, because that's where they are. Long-time residents that contribute to the coffers of this country, that they have six months or else. You will not be able to get the products of the census office. The same census office that you can't go get the registration form now because you have to make an appointment. You can't walk into the government building anymore. If you can't fix your government apparatus, you, you have to clean up your census. You then told us, the people, that the census is clean, is great, is awesome, it's done. We have X amount of people registered. Here's the breakdown. You give us the whole numbers. You give us the nationalities. You give us the voters. And now, you're telling long-time residents and people who have Dutch passport, A, we need your birth certificate from your country of origin. It has to be no older than three years. So why would they have a birth certificate from their country when they've been living here for how long? Who comes up with these things at the government administration building? I refuse to believe that this is Luke Marcelina. I refuse. Because I, last time I checked, Serge is supposed to be smart. Not a jackass who go like, I think we should, we should, we should get people birth certificates. Yes. How about you give me, how about you give us your birth certificate? Start with yours and then we go start with ours. Don't study them. I pissed off. I wasn't even going to do a show today. And then when I saw that, I was like, well, and then people stop at me and they're like, Andrew, I haven't been home in 20, 30 years. I don't know, I don't even have family there no more because I made my family here. So now I gotta take a plane. No, because I have six months. And the, 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 the birth certificate ain't something that's gonna get, get here quick. Quick, 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 quick. So I have to go. You can't FedEx it. You have to literally go or, yeah, okay, they're gonna send it. You know what countries do with people, their citizens that leave? Some countries. Oh, you want birth certificate from the country you ran away from? Oh, you want birth certificate and you, you don't even live here? Yeah, okay, we're going to let you know, okay? Just wait for it. Yeah, but if I don't get it in the next six months, then I won't be able to get the registration form. Ooh! I don't get it. I don't get it. What is going on at the, at the government administration, the administration of the country is in trouble? And Luke Mercelina is the Minister of General Affairs besides being the Prime Minister. And if he doesn't do anything about it, this thing is going to get bigger and more disappointment is going to come because I don't know if Dr. Luke Mercedina remembers that these people are voters and you are spitting in their faces because three months ago, you asked them to vote for you.
Remember that? And now, after they vote for you, and you're like, yes, we got a government we want and we deserve. We, we, want, your, you, we want your birth certificate. Who paying for it? You want me to pay for it? So I got to tell you that I legal after I have everything here in St. Martin? Where we, where we going? I, I don't get it. Like, I feel like this week was very draining because every day was some drama, some, some, some dumb decision. Like, who made these decisions and who think, who, who, how do you think you could get away with it? They have some people who said, no, I am not getting it. I just recently voted. You know where my address is. Print my registration form after you make an appointment to do it, and then find out about where I come from because I didn't lie about it. But you told me to go to my country right now. I got to go jump on a plane, go there, or make a phone call and get all these things just to go like, for them to go like, ah, okay, all right. Okay, you're good. You're legal again. Oh yeah, can you can you can you can you make sure you vote for this politician for the next election? <sighs> Welcome to the late night show. We have a good one for you. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. You got ministers closing down businesses. <sighs> GB, you know. And now I don't even know what this is. Give us your status. Three months after election was held. You see why is this a matter not a real place? I don't get it. But anyway, they say it's about 7,650 persons um, file or incomplete at the registry. They only know this now. So what are you going to do? You're going to write out 7,000 people? Good luck with that. And good luck for the next elections, USM, because I blame this solely on RU. Because these decisions, the one with the appointment and the walk-ins at the government building, ridiculous. Strike two is this dumb shit. I don't know what's going to be strike three. Uh, the, 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 the term is still fresh. We have a good one for you. Let's begin. You deserve to enjoy the fruits of your labor and know that you're covered in case of a disaster, like an unexpected fire or a vehicular collision. At Magical Insurances, we focus on settling your claims quickly and fairly so you can get back to enjoying your life. Magical Insurances, fast, fair, and always there. Newton. Anytime I see the girl, you want to get full 
like a cigarette, bend down, like a nix. Slap up on your body, girl, shake up your leg, boom, like a cigarette, bend down, like a nix. Slap up on your body, girl, shake up your leg. Everybody get mad now. At GEBE, we take the safety and quality of your water seriously. Every day, our dedicated sample collectors venture into the field, visiting the places that matter to you. Water tanks, school, supermarkets, home, and high-risk areas. Once these samples return to our water quality lab at KB, they embark on a journey that safeguard your well-being. Our dedicated analysts take over, sending these samples to the microbiology and chemistry departments respectively. This is where the magic happens. We test for a range of parameters, and we do this every single day, no matter what, including holidays and weekends. In our microbiology department, we focus on two major tests targeting various bacteria. Confirmation tests are conducted, and we have plans in place in case the results are confirmed. And then we do it all over again, seven days a week, 365 days a year, rain or shine, your water safety never takes a day off. So when you turn on the tap and enjoy a glass of GEBE's water, you can do so with confidence. GEBE, the power to serve. Have you been good? Have you been behaving? We'll have to find out because the Big Al, the Judge Big Al to you, is going to be deliberating it on Late Night Court TV. Good evening and welcome to uh, Late Night Court TV. I am Judge Al B. Al and I would like to remind everyone these are real court cases from real people, real sentencing, real crimes in an unreal place like St. Martin. I would like to shout out the Bar Association of St. Martin, all you lawyers and all you judges uh, doing a great job, keeping the criminals off the street, keeping the, you know, keep, yeah, yeah, you're doing a great job. Let's move on to the first case. Man sentenced for embezzling $11,000 from an exotic dancer, and I don't think this is pimping. Let's get into it. The court of first instance on Thursday handed down a conditional two-month prison sentence, two months, 100 hours of community service and a fine of 2,000 guilders to a man found guilty of embezzling $11,000 from an exotic dancer earlier this year. How did he do it? Let's see. Jean-Luc... Jean... Jean-Luc Truon, 53 years old, told the court during his trial on Thursday, and 53 years old, you at that age, you at that zaddy age, you know, that uh, sugar daddy age, so... Uh, Let's don't even, I'm not here to judge, well, maybe I am here to judge, but I'm not here to judge who your friends are. That's all I'm saying, okay? Jean-Luc Truong told the court during his trial on Thursday that a woman, then employed as a dancer at an adult entertainment club, Platinum Room, had approached him for a favor. She was leaving the country. I sure he approached her for a favor too, <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, uh, she was leaving the country and wanted him to wire $11,000 to her bank account in the Czech Republic in exchange for the same amount in cash. Uh, Truong took the cash, but said, <laughs> and this is where it starts, you know, but, when you get to that but, but said, um, he wanted to invest it and make a profit before transferring the woman money. He took the court, uh, he told the court that this plan had not worked because he had run into unforeseen financial trouble and pointed out that he has since repaid the entire sum. Now, this is, oh, this is it. Listen, people borrow you their money. How is your financial troubles affecting other people money. That's all, that's, that's where it starts. The prosecutor considered him guilty and demanded a three month conditional prison sentence and 200 hours of, did, did, did he have to pay the $11,000 back? Cause all I'm saying is 2,000 guilders. Uh, and 200 hours of community service because he's on probation for a previous conviction for embezzlement. The prosecutor also asked the judge to impose one month stint in prison still hanging over his head from the charge. I gotta, I gotta say something, you know. 
I find um, when somebody does something the first time and they get a sentence and on probation, then they do it the second time, it should be like, you know, it should be a little bit more. You know what I mean? And this seems very light, I must say. Defense lawyer Jairo Bloom, a very, very good lawyer, uh, pleaded for his client's acquittal, arguing that it had never been his intention to mislead and take advantage of the vulnerable woman. Bloom noted that it was the woman who had initiated the exchange because as a temporary immigrant worker, it was practically impossible for her to open a local bank account. New law, open bank accounts for people. Could avoid all of this, could avoid all of this. Banks, that's for the banks. Please, don't, don't mess with my point. Okay, good. Um, yeah. It was, uh, Bloom argued that without her, um, Tron's help, she would have been forced to use money transfer companies like Western Union, all right company, uh, which charge high fees per transaction, the defense, so the, <laughs> she paid the ultimate fee, didn't she? <laughs> you get it? Because the, yeah. The defense lawyer emphasized Strong's testimony that he only wanted to invest and make some extra money. He invested the whole $11,000, describing his client's actions as no worse than what commercial banks do every day. He ain't wrong. <laughs> he ain't really wrong. You not a bank, though. You is not a bank, G, at all. And so uh, you got a point, but you don't got a point. And you definitely can't point. You get it? Okay. However, the judge ruled that the defendant did try to embezzle the woman's cash, supporting his guilty verdict based on phone messages between her and dude. According to the judge, these conversations showed the woman repeatedly asking Trong for proof that he had wired the money, with Trong trying to trick her by beating around the bush and making up excuses. I mean, how long are you going to say, I sent it? You know what I mean? I sent it. I mean, she lived here a little bit, so she know the bank. She, she know things go slow in St. Martin, but yeah. Oh, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> okay, this is the point at which you commit the offense of embezzlement, the judge told Tron. The judge handed down a slightly different sentence than what the prosecutor had demanded, setting, uh, settling on a fine and an extended probation period for the previous conviction instead of imposing jail time at the fill to capacity point Blanche prison. Both Tron and the prosecutor waived the right to appeal after the verdict was pronounced, which means the sentence is irrevocable give the dancer back her money she worked hard for that money you don't know how she got that money she probably won it at one of our sponsoring you know uh lotteries you know but our uh, dance pay is good uh so move on, moving on to the next one let's just let's just let's just get to the next one Community service and conditional prison time for machete attack. A machete attack. The judge of first instance sentenced a man on Thursday to a conditional six months in prison and 180 hours of community service for chopping another man on the arm with a machete on July 13. Joseph J. Lewis, 38 years old. So, uh, more than likely, I know you. I'm not judging. No, I am judging. Okay. Um, did not contest the charges, uh, attempted aggravated assault and possession of a weapon. So he take it, he take it on the chin. Yeah, I do it, cool. Um, as he did not attend his trial on Thursday. Oh, he just didn't show up and was not represented by a lawyer, whoa. So um, that was Thursday, that was yesterday basically. So you reading this in the paper or watching this on the Andrew, on late night with Andrew Dick. So uh, uh, deal with this, okay? Um, the victim was present in the courtroom and submitted a claim of $135 in material damages for the hoodie that was destroyed in the attack. The prosecutor considered the charges proven based on the victim's statement and a medical report that described a three centimeter deep cut on his upper right arm. Police also found Lewis with a mashup, probably the same mashup. He admitted to officers that he had chopped the victim during the argument about stolen ties. Yeah, 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 I chopped him. Me, look at my shirt there. Comfort. Yeah, what time? Cool, no problem. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure some of the police officers was like, what? He stole your tires? Yeah, man, he deserved that. But somehow, they made it to court for $135. He can't even buy two tires without. Anyway, moving on. Police also found Lewis, uh, the prosecutor then demanded a six month conditional prison sentence and 180 hours of community service for the first time offender. First time. First time, things tense, mental health on an all-time 
mbucky time right now in St. Martin. Please, people, don't, don't steal and don't owe people because you're going to end up on late night court TV. I mean, six months conditional means if he does anything else, he goes, you know, he goes in 180 hours of community service. I don't know. I am pretty fair. What's, what's alarming is $135. Let me tell you something. Anybody ever indent my skin ain't gonna be no $135. I'll tell you that. My mother and father work hard to make me. I'll tell you that. <laughs> ain't $135 worth of work. Anyway, last case. Court upholds Tayat order to close down District 721. This might be sensitive. The Court of First Instance has upheld a recent decision by Minister of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Transport and Telecommunications, the Honorable Grisha Heiliger Gamartin. Hey, Grish. That closed down District 721, at least until the nightclub on Welfare Road can get a new operational license. The ministerial decision of September 2nd ordered the closure of 721 due to a missing operational license. I mean, you need a license to operate. This followed about a week after a contingent of Tayat inspectors, pick up ISF, um, and law enforcement officials closed down the nightclub because of excessive noise and music being played past midnight. So that's the reason. Uh, government's lawyer Richard Gibson Jr. of Gibson & Associates, good lawyer, uh, argued at Tuesday's emergency hearing that the previous license had expired when the open-air nightclub burned down in January 2023. He said a new license is needed because a new building now stands in its place. Do you need a new operational license or you need a new building permit? Um, I'm, I'm a bit confused. According to Article 40 of the National Ordinance on Permits, an operational license automatically expires when a permit holder when a permit holder loses their premises for more than a year. It's all in the law. This is 721's lawyer, Monique Hoffman. Yeah. Of Berman Law Office uh, argued that the previous operational license was still valid. Yeah. Did it normally say the office that the attorney works for? Seems a bit out of sorts. Anyway, Hoffman argued that her clients did not lose their business location. Got a point. As they kept paying the land lease throughout 2023. Got a financial point. She also pointed out that District 721 had received a building permit to reconstruct the nightclub in December 2023 within a year of the devastating fire. Yes, but it didn't open. Although the structure is newly built, Hoffman argued that it should not be seen as new because it's exactly the same as the one that burned down. However, let's see what the judge said. However, the judge dismissed these arguments and completely sided with the Tayat minister in his verdict. On Wednesday afternoon, the judge ruled that the District 721 had lost its premises for more than a year, noting that the definition of premises in the National Ordinance on Permits includes both the area and the physical structure. Okay. The fact that a building permit was granted within a year does not change this. Having a building permit is not the same as having a location. It is also irrelevant that the new building would be the same as the old building, the judge said in his verdict, okay? The premises was destroyed, and then more than a year later, there was reconstruction. In this case, a new permit is required by law, okay? Under Article 42 of the National Ordinance on Permits, business owners must inform the minister in writing if they plan to rebuild or renovate damaged property. The judge pointed out that District 721 also had not done this. Did they know, like, did somebody tell them? In her pleadings on Tuesday, Hoffman painted her client as the victims of regular harassment by government officials, pointing to multiple rounds of inspections and fines over the years, as well as several lawsuits involving District 721, many of which the nightclub won. However, the judge struck down this claim as unfounded, ruling that District 721 had not submitted any evidence to prove it had been treated differently than other businesses in the area. Given the fact that local residents complain specifically about District 721 and not about other establishment, it was up to give concrete form to their argument, the judge said. Wednesday's verdict means that District 721 has to remain closed until it receives a new operational license. The nightclub could also appeal, pinning its hope on another judge in a non-urgent, substantive hearing overturning Wednesday's verdict. However, this could take months and the closure would remain in effect at all time. My advice? Yeah, file for that permit ASAP.
Round two, this is the second time for the year that District 721 has taken the office of the Teat Minister to court over contested licenses. The first case stemmed from June 13 when the Teat Minister revoked the nightclub's business license and the director license of owner Mario Di Palma. Respected businessman. Mm -hmm. Woo, okay, and um, this was a mere 15 days before District 721's grand reopening. So they, so she revoked it before the opening. Okay. Okay. Uh, however, the nightclub successfully petitioned the court to set aside the two decisions in an emergency court hearing on June 26, which paved the way for District 721 to open and conduct business. Notably, the judge in this case found that the Tayad Minister had unfairly used a regulation that allows government to take back a permit if a business is closed for three months in a row. The closure in January was caused by a fire, which made operation impossible. The minister has not revoked the permits of any other companies in St. Martin that have been affected by a disaster such as after Hurricane Irma. It was stated in a verdict, but I mean, Hurricane Irma, everybody, I mean, I mean, okay, okay. Uh, by withdrawing the permit after 16 months, knowing that the plaintiff is busy rebuilding his company for which a building permit had also been granted, the minister has used her authority unreasonably. The business license had also been revoked due to past noise complaints. However, the judge rejected it, saying that government could not revoke the license based on complaints that were two or three years old. The week's case focused on the nightclub's operational license, one of several permits required to run a business in St. Martin. Other necessary permits include business and director's licenses. Yet, another case popped up just last week. A group of residents and businesses near 721 took the nightclub to court, demanding it comply with a 60 decibel noise limit outlined in its operational license or face financial penalties. Man, oh man, y'all know like District 721 doesn't have a roof for most part of it. So like, I guess that's mostly the issue. Because there are other clubs, why isn't it as loud? I, I, I fail to believe, I, maybe I just see the good in people or, or, or I don't, fail to believe that, you know, they're just like, hey, is this 60? Let's turn it all the way up. You know, I don't think that's going on. But um, let's, maybe it has to do with that. Who am I? I'm not here to judge. I'm, I'm here to judge. The civil lawsuit filed by a foundation representing the residents of Simpson Bay Yacht Club, as well as nearby businesses, Carry Broadcasting Network, which runs radio station Island 92 and Whitten Blau. Oh, wait, Island 92? Hey, what's up, Sock? And Whitten Blau 2NV, which owns the building that houses Topper's Restaurant and the Bar. Uh, accused the nightclub of repeatedly playing music in the range of 89 to 102 decibels. Somebody's measuring. Um, or more than 30 decibels higher than permitted. They base their claim on a series of noise readings and official complaints between June and August. According to the plaintiff, lawyer Vivian Chonini, that's not her name. That's not her name. Uh, Vivian Shuni of Fox and Associates, the nightclub's unlawful noise nuisance has resulted in disturbed sleep and neg negative health outcomes for those living and working in the area. For example, some neighbors have to use medication to get enough sleep at night, while others medication to get while others have trouble functioning at work the next day. A verdict in this case is expected on October 25th, but there's a chance that the plaintiff's case may be declared inadmissible as their claims focus on District 71's operational license, which a different judge has found to have expired. I want to be I want to be honest. This article really said too much. It was about the director's license. It should have just stayed about the director's license. We went into all kind of drama and noise from years before and stuff other ministers did and who, which neighbors been snitching and complaining. It was just a lot of drama. Um, but yeah, I guess you got that on Late Night Court TV. See you next week here on Late Night with, you know, Another soon to be in the papers guy, Andrew Dick. Time for commercial break. When we come back, more late night. Stay with us. Hello, my people. Make sure you tune in to Sit, Sip, and Chat every Monday at 5 p.m. on TV 15 and every Wednesday at 8 30 p.m. And make sure to tune in to the late night show with Andrew Dick from Monday to Friday at 10 p.m. with a repeat in the afternoon for no reason. In the afternoon, the late night show at 3 p.m. Thank you, TV15. Thank you, TV15. Make sure to tune in. Make sure to tune in to the late night. And sit, sip, and chat. Late night.
Welcome to SXM Taxi, the most convenient way to hail a taxi on St. Martin. Our app is strictly dedicated to licensed taxi drivers only on the island of St. Martin. You must have an active authorized taxi license and driver's license to be approved to use our service. Our app is designed for the convenience of both customers and drivers. Customers simply download the app, upload a credit card, and have immediate access to any driver available nearby. Once you sign up and are approved to drive, you can choose when you want to use the app by toggling the switch at the top center of your screen to either online or offline. When you are online, you will be alerted for passenger pickups in your area. Be visible to riders and be able to accept rides. When you are offline, you will not receive alerts and you will be invisible to riders. This feature is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week to use at your discretion, making the app extremely flexible and user-friendly for the driver. Once the rider requests a taxi, a notification is sent to all drivers in the vicinity. The first available driver to accept the ride gets the fare. Once you are alerted of a potential fare, you can accept the trip by clicking the accept button at the bottom of your screen. The app's built-in GPS feature will then guide you directly to the rider's location. By clicking the three dots in the upper right hand corner of your screen, you can choose from three different GPS integrations, Apple Maps, Google Maps, or Waze. This feature gives you the ability to use the GPS platform you are most comfortable with. Please keep in mind that you must download the GPS app that you prefer separately onto your phone in order to use this feature. We recommend downloading the Waze GPS app for best results as we find it to be the most accurate and up-to-date GPS platform. Once you arrive at your passenger pickup point slide, the mark arrived arrow at the bottom of your screen. For added security, the app will require you to enter either the last four digits of the passenger's phone number or an OTP code that was provided to the rider. This built-in safety feature protects drivers from unwanted or incorrect passengers. Once you enter the correct code, the ride can start by swiping the slide to begin arrow on the bottom of your screen. Once the trip is complete, simply swipe the slide to end ride arrow on the bottom of your screen. The fare is automatically calculated and charged to the rider's credit card. You are now ready and available for your next ride. Driver Sign Up Bonus Fees All drivers that sign up to use our service will receive an additional 10% booking fee for every fare booked with the app through 2025. In addition, the first 100 drivers that use our service and reach their 100th ride milestone with SXM Taxi will receive a one-time $500 bonus fee.
signed up for Flex by Talem. Do you mean Flex like this? Um, definitely not that. <laughs> Do you mean Flex like this? No, definitely not that. Do you mean Flex like this? No, definitely not Flex like that. Talem's Flex is a mobile plan that adapts to your needs. Each month, I get a preset monthly fee that has a set amount of data, SMS, and minutes. So I know what I'm getting. But say goodbye to overages and bill shock because when I go over my postpaid plan, it switches to prepaid. So I have the flexibility to top up what I need when I need it. I'm in complete control. My budget, my rules. Good morning to the people of St. Martin and the ministers that are here present today. Minister, question to Minister of Health, of Health, yeah? Minister Gordon Carty, okay, Gordon Carty. Um, Minister, the people are panicking up to now as we speak um, in regards to the coronavirus. Um, Minister, it, it has been said by government up to now there is no case and that's St. Martin. Um, can you inform the people if there are any symptoms so far of the coronavirus exists anywhere and that's St. Martin? Question to the Minister of Justice. Minister of Justice, it have ha harshly present that um, you have been refusing to comply with a group of lawyers um, to remove prisoners to different to the Netherlands and also Bonaire. Is this statement correct? And what do you have in plan? Do you have a quick fix? Uh, Mr. Brown, I didn't quite get your question. You say if the statement is correct, which statement are you referring to exactly? That you, you haven't co complied with the wishes of the lawyers um, and their, their clients in the prison. Is, but uh, which, uh, what are you referring to exactly? Which wishes? I want to answer your question. The first. wishes mean that in seven days, um, the prisoners are okay. um, supposed to okay. leave St. Martin. <laughs> Question again to Minister Garden Carty. Minister, there's a reason why um, person have took off, took away from the ship um, for reason um, by the, by the authority of Saint Martin. Um, you will you will make it straight or plain um, if it's not accurate, uh, Minister. There's a lot of. Um, People on person who are, who are categorizing symptoms of um, of the corona um, virus. Um, it also said there are different. There are seven different categories of the virus, and we just been careful that some people have belly hurting, coughing, and they are making their own analysis. Um, you have mentioned the different categories of the virus. But can you make it plain again to the, to the people? Because everybody become analysts these days and giving their own opinion. So let the people know plainly. The COVID-19. <coughs> Welcome to the Late Night Show. Hope everything is okay. Hope everything is all right. I'm your host, Andrew Dick. All right, let us begin. Let us begin, boys and girls. Listen to this and listen very carefully. Um, the coronavirus. I know that uh, you know people want me to stop talking about it, and I can understand. Um, it's just, you know, 
a crazy disease that's going all over the world. But St. Martin seems to focus more on the Heineken regatta than actual, you know, staying alive. But that's okay. What do I know? <laughs> anyway, um, I, I noticed that the, the Prime Minister, Severa Jacobs, has gotten very, very, very stubborn when it comes to this coronavirus. And I must say that I'm very disappointed. The reason being is that, I don't want to say she doesn't care about St. Martin people, but I want to say that it's starting to look that she is being a bit stubborn when it comes to people's advice and dealing with this virus. For some reason, she thinks she has all the answers and she believes that her word is the end and that is it. What am I talking about? So what pisses me off, the first thing that pisses me off about um, the Prime Minister, Sylvia Jacobs, right now, is that she tends to think that St. Martin is two nations and it's two separate things whenever it comes to anything that is negative. But when something is positive, it's one island, one country, one people. It's so confusing. Now, for example, the Prime Minister recently said in a press conference that there is no coronavirus on Dotson Martin and no suspected cases on Dotson Martin and there is no indication that something bad is going to happen in Dotson Martin because we have everything locked down and good and great and we are the best. On the French side, on the other hand, there is the coronavirus and they have two people who have coronavirus and they came through the Dutch side, but they're on the French side now, so we have to stay French side, Dutch side. They got two, two different places, two different, no, 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 no. Don't associate us with the French side. We are the Dutch side and the Dutch side, don't have no coronavirus. Therefore, St. Martin doesn't have coronavirus. And then in the same sentence, the Prime Minister says, Therefore, we have decided to have a joint um, press conference and a joint meeting once a week so that we can compare notes and make sure that you know everything as a united front because we are at the end of the day one island and i'm there watching this and i'm like but this woman think we <laughs> how is it that she is just going to say it's a pandemic worldwide Worldwide, it's a pandemic. It's, 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 it's really, really bad for the world. But there's no reason to really panic in St. Martin because it's on the French side. What the hell? It's like she, she catch some of Leona Marlin's craziness. She, she just like catch on some of it. Okay. Let's bring it back. Let me calm down and let's bring it back. Because holding a press conference, Prime Minister Severia Jacobs, and telling people in their faces that they don't have anything to worry about, everything is fine, is wrong. While, let me give some information. So, Beijing, China. A lot of places. Wait, is Beijing and China the same place? In the same... China is in Beijing. I don't know. Anyway, I really need to read more. <laughs> anyway, okay, focus, Andrew, focus. All right. So, this is the situation. They have decided, Beijing have decided that from now on, um, anybody who is leaving or visiting Beijing, they will have to be quarantined for 14 days before they let go. So even if you go on vacation and you never set foot in China, you go, by, you go there, you start up, 
You go by the, uh, you come in from the airport. They tell you, okay, welcome to Beijing. Uh, right now, enjoy your stay for 14 days in quarantine. Just make a right and take a left. Just wait there for 14 days. Stay there for 14 days. We got you. And then after the 14 days, you can decide what you want to do. No problem. If you want to leave again, <laughs> no problem. If you want to stay, and you know, when you come back, it's 14 days again. That's almost two weeks, the people, of just being monitored. That is the precaution that a big country like Beijing is doing. They have other countries that shut down the borders. But I know, you don't want to go to the extreme to shut down the entire St. Martin because we can't afford it. I get that. But to simply say, right to the St. Martin people, that there's nothing to worry about is a bold-faced lie, and I'm waiting for her to take it back because she lying to St. Martin people. Big-time lie. This is a worldwide deadly virus and you just watching us in our face saying ah, it's on the friend side i have a theory and the theory is that the cruise line industry management called the prime minister a night and when the person called when the person in charge of the, the cruise ship um, industry called St. Martin, they reminded St. Martin how much they own half of things and how much they contributed to the development of St. Martin. So the Prime Minister had no choice but to just answer the phone and say, Okay, don't know why talking about. Imagine Prime Minister sleeping. All of a sudden, her phone ring. Zzz, 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 zzz. She picks up the phone. Before she says hello, you hear a voice in the background going like, Girl, I ain't telling you not to pick up the phone after 6 o'clock. And then, of course, the private minister goes like, Sorry, baby. And then she answers again. She says, hello. hello, this is private minister Sylvia Jacobs. The person on the phone says, this is Mr. Michael Booker from the International Cruise Association. Oh, hi. Am I speaking to the Prime Minister of St. Martin? Yes, you are. Look, um, this is how you're going to do this for me, ma'am. San Domingo, St. Lucia, they're not going to receive any more ships. That's, that's just how it's going to happen. You, uh, seeing we own your port, are gonna accept the boats, the ships. You're gonna arrange the flights. You're gonna have everybody flown out. You're gonna handle it. You got this. I'll call you tomorrow. But, 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 I'll call, but, you, but, I'll call but, you tomorrow to make sure that uh, everything went okay. Um, you can go on international websites. We have all the necessary propaganda prepared. You got this. Have a good evening. And then she hangs up the phone. And then the person is about going like, mm -hmm. Okay, baby. That's basically, I, I have that in my head, you know, because it's impossible that the cruise industry is basically dictating to St. Martin. And we just, we just taking it. I mean, this is the prime minister that just recently stood up against France for wanting to send the military through Dot St. Martin to go and fight off St. Martin people on the French side. The same French side that she's doing the whole time. Remember, you, 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 you said you didn't want to, to interfere. That's why you are not letting them pass through St. Martin to go and fight against your own St. Martin people. So at that time, we was one. We was one island. But now, they have the coronavirus. We don't have the coronavirus, so we good. We good, we good. Sack of <laughs> Okay, calm down. Another thing, last thing. Business people out there. I know times has been hard, and I know that there were times that you always, you almost, you almost closed up. 
But we are, we are noticing, the people of St. Martin, we are noticing that you raise your prices for your hand sanitizer. Stop your <laughs> We notice. It's called price gouging. Stop it. Stop it. And the people who are supposed to be in charge, the silent people, the people who are having different meetings in Parliament right now, instead of dealing with this coronavirus, Chris, I mean, all are you. What's happening with Parliament? Why am I not hearing from Parliament? So because it's a National Alliance government, right now, we ain't going to hear from the parliamentarians who have so much to say about St. Martin. And we, we recently get the love for St. Martin during the, 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 the parliamentary elections, right? But now you're just quiet because what well, you're going through screening. That's why all you can't say nothing. You have literally these business people <laughs> us from the back and raising the price of these sanitizers and you just ain't saying nothing you know why because i know you buy a box too you buy a crane too you buy a you buy a you buy a container too that's why minister of justice jerendy doran during the time when you was up in opposition you said that government at the time on the leona Marin government was messing with the people when it comes to price control supermarket you get you get elected based on your calibration department idea and we, we should we should make sure that the prices are double checked and triple checked and inspectors should go and check out the balls of casinos <laughs> <That's still fun. laughs> remember he said, who checks the balls of the casino? <laughs> okay. Anyway, he, inspectors should go and check to see how much for bread and how much and who's selling bread and if they have a right to sell bread. And it was always about the consumers and the people. Now we hear nothing because he sits in the Council of Ministers. Why? the Chinese and the other businesses are just basically no grease. I'm upset. Coronavirus is here, people. It's in St. Martin. We can't be one island for one day and the second day. We separated. I hate double talkers. I hate it. I hate it with a passion. Parliament, open your mouth, please. Call a meeting, emergency meeting with the minister of VSA. Please, no. Call the prime minister since she activated the EOC and get first-hand information what kind of craziness she's doing. Because I have a feeling she, is, she has no idea what the hell she's doing. It's, it's ridiculous. We can't be one island, Prime Minister, and then tomorrow, it's only France. Welcome to the Late Night Show. Got a good one for you. Don't forget, One Love Reggae Concert, Bounty Killer, Beanie Man, Busy Signal, I Wayne, Four Legends, One Stage, No Coronavirus. That is it for the Late Night Show. Thank you so much for watching. Until Monday, do have a safe and pleasant one. Bye-bye.